In this tutorial, we'll share our best practices for configuring a slide where a learner is required to watch a video in its entirety before proceeding in a course. First, a quick word about why just restricting the menu might not be enough. You'll see that when the player menu is set to restricted, the next button is disabled until the end of the timeline. However, if the viewer clicks directly on the video, it'll pause and now the video timeline is out of sync with the slide timeline. Consequently, the next button opens up before the whole video is watched. Our solution will not only fix this, but also display an error message. Let me walk you through how it was built. Our slide will have three layers, the base layer, a video layer, and an error layer. Let's start with the error layer. Here, add the shape with the on-screen text to display. For my design, I decided to keep the message at the bottom of the screen so it doesn't cover up the video. In addition, we'll insert a close button and assign a trigger that will hide this layer when the close button is clicked. For the slide layer properties, deselect Hide Other Slide Layers and change Allow Seeking to None. Next is the video layer, and this is where we'll insert the video file. Open the video tools options and make sure the video is set to play automatically. We'll also hide the video controls and have the video show in the slide as opposed to a new browser window. Then we'll add a hotspot over the entire video. This is important because the hotspot acts as a cover that prevents the video from being paused should someone click directly on the slide. The slide layer properties here hide the other slide layers, allow for seeking, and on revisit, will reset to the initial state. Finally, on the base layer, we'll add a button to launch the video layer. Here's where we could use some creativity to create a seamless experience for the learner. I start by inserting a picture that's the first frame of the video they're going to watch. You can get this by right-clicking on your video and selecting Export Frame as Picture. For the Play button, add a rectangle over the entire slide. Then adjust the fill transparency to 100%. Now edit the normal state of the rectangle and insert a play icon. You can also create a visited and hover state if you want to. When you're done, you'll create a trigger that will show the video layer when the user clicks this button or rectangle. This design means that the learner can click anywhere on the image and the video will play. It's a good idea to also add on-screen instructions like we have done here. Next, we'll create a variable to restrict the navigation. This will be a true-false variable I'll call video complete. It has a default value of false. On the video layer, add a trigger that adjusts the variable to true when the timeline ends. Finally, back on the base layer, edit the trigger for the next button so that it will jump to the next slide only if the variable is true. Or else, show the error layer. Now the viewer is required to watch the video all the way through in order to move forward in the course.